So, the big night is here. We are coming to you live from Ross's bedroom in Stratford. It's the first annual Boyask Awards. And we're going to go to the red carpet and interview all the famous people who have turned up. That was great. Uh, carpet, no one there. carpet here is uh, beige, actually. Okay, the beige carpet. <laughs> so, look, um, there's two reasons for this. One, the Oscars are a joke. So, hey, why not make fun of them? Um, but two, and I think far more importantly, the Oscars still fail after all these years to acknowledge the, uh, the work of stunt performers and action choreographers throughout the industry. And, you know, this is not just us getting pissy on our little soapbox, on our little podcast. This is, you know, famous stunt performers. Um, there's petitions, there's websites, there's all of this. And considering some of the tat the Oscars spend time on, the 18 musical numbers on every edition, um, it's, it's well above time that these performers get some recognition. Mr. Boyask, what do you think? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so we've decided to instigate the annual Boyask Awards, named after famed independent director and friend of the show, Stroke. Wait, did you say, wait, stop. Did you say famed? Well, you know, some people know you. Could you not say that, please? Because there's a horrible, horrible website, Essex-based, that keeps calling people who are disgusting. Oh, okay. Famed. Okay. In that case, I you, take that back. I'm not even fucking, I'm not even fucking kidding. Uh, esteemed. Uh, independent famed, famed, famed muscular looking what a fuck is who writes this shit <laughs> they, they, like what he, this person looking muscular in his new suit looks like a fat guy and I'm a fat guy by the way I'm, I'm like really like are you check out her gorgeous assets uh, on it mate on it. for people out there I'm not going to name names because you can find it look up I don't know what it is the Essex something or other online and the film people they cover. And please don't believe what they say. There you go. Okay. <laughs> uh, so, esteemed Sorry, independent really fucking angry now. director. That esteemed. Who the hell? Who? What? Oh, Something. I don't know. I need some kind of adjective to put before you. I can't. Just say I... he's all right. Just say he's all right. Okay. Like, he okay. So, all right, independent director, friend of the show, and my, my, my wonderful uh, lover. One My time, wonderful one lover, lover. Uh, Ross. So basically, these are Ross's action awards because Ross knows action um, better Ish. than a lot of people out there. So we thought it would be fun mm. to do this. But let's contextualise this. What a clusterfuck the Oscars have been this year and they haven't even taken place as we record this. Oh, I mean, it's sorry, absolutely. we're live. We're live the same night as we're the Oscars. We're live at the Oscars. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're in it's California and absolutely. I'm standing there giving out these awards as people walk in. But if I mean, we weren't... It been, it, but it, look, seriously, it has been... Look, I don't know how many of us even care anymore, except for it's good to know, I guess, who won or whatever was nominated. It's been an absolute travesty this year. In fact, it's been a side effect or a shoot off shoot or whatever of the whole. Uh, you've got to fire James Nunn because he made offensive jokes. You've got to not have this person. And they're, and they're doing what people are saying. By the way, just to be really clear, they're doing what morons are saying. They're literally doing what idiots are telling them to do. They're not, they're not turning around and going, you're idiots, we're not doing that. And as a result, they've had the person who they really wanted to do the Oscars step down because he refused to apologise because he's already apologised to these idiots. Why would you apologise to idiots? Um, but he did that. He's not apologising again, so he stepped down, which was the right thing to do. Absolutely. And because of Kevin, that, Kevin Hart. Kevin, Kevin Hart. Yeah. And subsequently, they haven't been able to find anyone to do it. <laughs> and they've allowed, they have, just to be really, really clear about this, they have allowed this to happen from people who are idiots. And not, this isn't something that's come down from like an authority that you could respect. It it's happened to idiots. And as a result, they haven't got anybody. Then they make the monumental clusterfuck of a, an announcement. Just to be clear, we're not showing this. We oh, no, no, hold on. Let's out. backtrack. Before even yeah. that clusterfuck of an announcement, the popular Oscar award. Oh, yes, yeah, sorry, you're absolutely yeah. right. The let's not forget Oscar the award. shit let's... we want to give Black Panther an award. <coughs> well, let's be blunt. Yeah, it's the Black Panther award because, like, there haven't been films similarly that could have benefited, like, the Avengers or and wherever. And let's be honest, like, and again, let's contextualise this. Suicide I fucking love 
action. I love superhero films, right? Of course. And there are 10 superhero films that are more worthy of that, Mm -hmm. including, if you want to go back to the back, let's look back to The Dark Knight and Batman Begins. Of course. Well, I mean, Dark Knight had a a nomination just for Heath Ledger dying. Um, And, you know, know, so so there are far worthier, at least 10 worthier films for the best popular Oscar than Black Panther, which is a deeply average film. Yeah, no. Look, it has been popular. It's made loads of money, so it's fair. Like, it's not. It's not. But are you awarding a film for making category. the most money? What was? The, I no, don't. That's what no, I don't they're understand. Doing, they're doing it. No, they're doing it because oh look, black people, you guys get an award. Hooray! And it is I'll that. Nice. It I'll literally be, I'll is. I'll be generous. Now, to be fair, it has been very popular, which is great. And by the way, I'm not dismissing. No, that. no, no, it's, no, no. That's not factually. That's not incorrect. That's not why they did it. But that's not so, why you give Oscars. Precisely. I mean. It is, because it used to be the Harvey's paid the most to get it's this political, Oscar, Oscar. But it's political. But that's paying money to them. That's not yeah. paying. That's, yeah, that's exactly it. So obviously then that. And then, of course, they then announced that they are going to put four categories to be given out during the advert breaks. Now, if I was to... Now, I don't disagree that the, the ceremony needs speeding up. And, and the um, yeah. the BAFTAs do this. So yes. you know, they don't screen everything. And let's be honest, there are some categories of, of Oscars that most people wouldn't mind kind of missing. And oh, well, I'm with thinking, the greatest respect, the short, like the short films. Yeah, the short I mean, films. With no disrespect intended. Nobody's been able to see those films. So no, why would literally you show no that? one can see them. So you, you, you never get maybe the best animated one because they tend to be before a Pixar film. Because yeah. uh, they tend to be Pixar. But yeah, you generally, you don't get to see them. So you could easily no. get rid of them and yep. put them somewhere else well put them in we'll put them in the advert break fine um, of course but to pick this year I mean year, the two the two the cinematography and editing and as as Del Toro ridiculous. said and Sp- I yeah. think Spielberg and Alfonso Cuarón well, a lot, said, of, a you, lot you of them basically put the two things that make a film yeah well was it Cuarón it might have been Cuarón or because of Del Toro someone said there have been best Films that have been like without sound, there have been best films without color, there have been best films without actors, there have been best blah blah blah. You can't have a best film that you didn't shoot and edit. <laughs> like, what are you talking? Talk- I suppose you could. I suppose you could have a best film that is a one shot take or something. I suppose you could do that. But even that, which would we- be, but that'd be nonsense because it's not real. There's and also, so that would still require edits. editing. Of course, it would. It all requires editing. You still require. You're still required to do things. So, it's just. Yeah, if it's still post-production involved, regardless. So it's just the idea of taking the two things that make up, like the, at the very core, are the most it, basic it's things. It's like taking that make away the film. director and. We well, take away the film star. Imagine yeah. not having the film, like the film, we didn't run film through the camera. So uh, there you go. <laughs> and it's like, whoever came to that decision, genuinely, you're a knobhead. You don't, you don't understand what films and that are. That said, the BAFTAs do actually exclude both those categories from the live TV Well, they did. I remember last year, the first time that Deakins finally got something, <laughs> and, they, and they, stuck it in the, they stuck it in the end credits. It's like, amazing. What are, you, um, what are you doing? And of course, just to make this even worse, they've now backtracked on this mm-hmm. and said, oh, no, 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 the speeches will be shown, but we'll just, you know, we'll give the awards away in the advert break, but we're just going to quickly show the speeches. It's absolutely absurd. It's so it's I've got ridiculous. a really good I've got a really good way you can make the Oscar broadcast less than three hours. Stop doing musical numbers. Right. There's like what is it, two or three or however many what they can Normally they do in. a musical number for each film. Oh, stop God. doing pointless stop I tell you what, stop reinterpreting Schindler's list in the medium right. of dance. Yeah, exactly. Still never ever forgotten that. And it's now absurd. to represent this film about the the massacre of of the uh, of jews in auschwitz um yeah. please give us please welcome the dance troupe to do an interpretive yeah, dance right. now welcome hot gossip who are going to come on and do a dance <laughs> <laughs> please welcome the black exploitation dancers right exactly <laughs> please morning. please welcome the german uh what's particularly weird is they could just show a clip it's just show a clip why do you yeah. need a life oh, also anyway? i mean not that i want to slam award shows while we're doing it but Okay, what's a song and what's music? Because the BAFTAs don't seem to understand mm. this. No. And the award for best BAFTA for best music in a film goes to A Star Is Born. Right. Which is not the same thing because it's not a score. No. And let's say, I suppose there was some scored music. But you, you kind of go, but then they showed the clip of that right, fucking right. Lady Gaga. Oh, I'm singing song. a song. Right, exactly. And you're like, Which is a great song. That's <coughs> not 
fucking music, dude. Yeah, people you can't put do. that in the same category as. Well, like Hans Zimmer doing the score. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah, exactly. insane. And uh, uh, just for the record, uh, to be fair, maybe the Oscars have picked the right way to go because having witnessed Joanna Lumley um, utterly did bomb, she, did she do it? Did she, she do it again? She was yeah. terrible last year, and she was worse this year. Can you imagine, like, at least not, the Oscars. It's not her fault. It's not her fault. Like she's just no, doing the job. No, it is. It no, is. I mean, it's not her fault. Well, they've hired. What I'm saying, no, is they've she's hired just doing her. What she's do. And yeah. but the thing is, they they've hired her. And they've obviously put a script writer together, but she yeah, has course. no ability to deliver comedy in a live environment. Well, I will say, I will say one of my favorite things about last year. In Scripted. fact, it was like, it was like two things from when she says, it's lovely to see everybody. I'm paraphrasing it. Blah, blah, blah. All the stars are here. But of course, tonight is not about them. Tonight, it's about the people behind the camera. That she she went on, she specifically yeah. says it like blah, blah, blah. You know, the technical people, the people who are usually unsung. And the very next thing she is, is saying, here to present the first award is the lovely, radiant, gorgeous and wonderful Jennifer Lawrence. Yes. Jennifer Lawrence sweeps out. But what she, Jennifer Lawrence looks at her and kind of goes, that was a bit much. Yeah, I remember like, that. I mean, she doesn't say it, she doesn't say it, but her face just kind of goes, did you hear what you just said? Yeah. And, then so, she, and she was great. She was great. And then right, and they specifically say it's about the people behind the camera. And the person behind the camera was in the end credits. Yeah. I know. What the fuck are you doing? And, and this year, they, they did that brilliant, she did that brilliant literal 10 minutes of introducing the people who turned up. Of course. So here we go. Like and matters. we have like Bradley matters. Cooper. And everyone claps right. and Bradley Cooper hey. looks awkward for two minutes. Yeah. And yeah. we have Glenn Close. And it's, it's like, terrible. oh my God, is she going to introduce every fucking person in the audience? I genuinely wonder if it's about sales because... The thing that I was confused about was in the two weeks, maybe a little bit more, but the two weeks running up to the BAFTAs, in London, there were, first of all, there were adverts in the cinema for the BAFTAs, but I kind of get that because you're in the cinema. Yeah. All around the tubes, undergrounds, there's adverts for the BAFTAs on TV. And I'm like, with like, you know, Tom Hardy holding his thing and fucking, I don't know, Emma Tom, like people just holding, or Kate Winslet or whatever, all around, all around the, the, the tube, everywhere. And I'm like, do you need to, pay for this like what who doesn't know like who's it's gonna look insane. about it and go i better watch the bafta like, it does, that's it, it. it's like no one that doesn't know about the baftas is not it's gonna it's gonna watch yeah. The, yeah but it doesn't add anything at all so but, but i'm kind of going there must be a reason for that there, there has to be a strategy for that it does so look i spent hundreds of thousands of pounds to do that probably so <laughs> what but we've not come here to slam other award shows. We've come here to, to, to celebrate greatness in action cinema. No, I put that back. What are you doing? Sorry. Like really sorry, noisy. I'm, sorry, I'm drinking um, an innocent smoothie. I've had plans for available. I've got lots of ice in it. Sorry. I was just having to see my throat. My throat. <laughs> well, again, the Oscars oh, don't have this shit, Ross. The Oscars don't yeah. have to deal with this shit. If they have Bradley Cooper, so fuck the Oscars. Yeah, that's true. Uh, and no host, though. Hey, I'm available. Hey. Hey. <laughs> I, w I was going to write like an intro script, but I realise that I don't care. Um, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine awards to give away this year. In Do the we? first oh, shit. inaugural okay. Boyask Awards. Uh, they, they range from, well, I'm not going to tell you because, you know. Ha -ha. So uh, I hope I've done this right. I've got to be honest. Oh God, I'd hate to think how bad this is going to go. We've not prepared mm. this. So we're going to start this year with the Best Action Sequence Award. Okay. And the I nominations are. So <clears throat> <laughs> this is where it falls apart. Well, I've I've done three. I, I don't know. I don't know. Okay, fine. So you have to pick one though. We can only give away one award. No, no. But you said the nominations yeah. are. Can I just cool. say the one I like, or do I have to do all of them? No, no. We're going to go. So the the nominations are. Okay, so the Ethan Hawke film Twenty Four Hours to Live. That is a, a massive shootout at the end, which I love. Okay. Uh, the British action movie Final Score. Oh, okay. Uh, Blimey. Which, which has an awesome motorcycle bit in it. I've actually seen it, but it's really enjoyable. I will. I will say something. The first time I tried to watch it, I got about twenty minutes in and went, oh, "I can't do this." And then I watched it again, and I'm really glad I did. Okay. But I found it really difficult to get through the first 15, 20 minutes, which was a bit of a <laughs> worry. But it gets awesome almost immediately after. <laughs> I mean, you don't um, hear this kind of honesty at the Oscars. <laughs> Mm. And then uh, uh, the other nomination is Mission Impossible Fallout, uh, which I've essentially just put the final act 
uh, cutting between the helicopter bit, the bit of a fight on the ground with uh, Simon Pegg and the bomb disposal stuff, which I know isn't necessarily an action scene, but it all cuts together as one big, massive, you know. Hold on. Let me, let me make envelope opening sounds. Oh, dear God. And the winner is... Uh, the Incredibles 2. No, just... <laughs> uh, it was actually Mission Impossible Fallout for that final act. It's an oh, incredible I I wish I was more energised. I feel sorry, guys. I'm really ill. Um, <laughs> like, um, that final act, the, the helicopter stuff, the fight, just all of it. It was just, It's incredibly and the whole film, edited, it's just isn't it? Yeah, it's amazing. And, it's, that, and, editing, and that editing award will be giving out in the advert break. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Look at all the work these guys did and, uh, in the advert break. Everyone got their biscuits? Good. Right, okay, so now we're going to talk about... <laughs> yeah. So Jesus next Christ. up is yes. Best Fight Scene. Ooh. And the nominations are... Well, I did. I did five for this. Okay. We, there's no. There's no limit. So you're you're good to go on this. So upgrade. Oh, uh, upgrade. I, I just. Great. I just put the first time he realizes he can fight. Yes. Then I did a prayer before dawn, which is an amazing time prison movie, which has a lot of fighting in it, and it's very raw and rough. So you can always pick any fight. They're all pretty similar. Uh, <laughs> uh, then uh, The Night Comes for Us, which I don't know if you saw, but it was an incredible film that came out last year. No, I haven't seen that. Uh, with Eco Uh I put The Final Fight because it's just absolutely bananas. Uh, Accident Man, uh, which is uh, Scott Adkins versus Ray Park and Michael Jai White, one for oh, the fans cool. out there. <coughs> Sorry. And then I even put Mission Impossible Fallout, The Toilets Fight, uh, which... Uh, uh, pays homage to a certain Korean movie. That is great. That is great. Uh, so it is. Yes. What, uh, what is he doing? <laughs> the winner is uh, the night comes for us. <gasps> nice. You do need to see it. If, 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 it took me a while to see it. People do need to watch the night comes for us. It's the most gory action film I've. It, like it's, it's hugely gory. The fights are completely bananas. Uh, but also, it's a really compelling film all the way through. It's not just the action; like it, it all works really well. Uh, and surprisingly, uh, and also... we have the cast and crew from The Night Comes for Us on the line. Oh, amazing! Hold, hold, on, hold on, I'm just going to dial them in. You're not about to do an offensive Asian accent. I'm are you? actually not. No, I was going to do a joke yes. about it not working. <laughs> okay. Oh, God, <laughs> I think we both lost that one. No, Phew. unfortunately, we've lost them. Uh, the international connection has not worked. Uh, they are not here to collect that award. I will collect it for them in their honour. I mean, this is like the early bastards. This isn't you'll it. You'll have to, you'll have to fight them for it. <laughs> have to, they'll have to fight me for it. Um, mm. This is like the early bastards when no one turned up. Um, <laughs> so next up, we have the best. I mean, you know, let's phrase this correctly because uh, because we could probably give out the other version of this, but the best stunt award. So here's the problem. I had five. Yeah. And they're all Mission Impossible Fallout. <laughs> Genuinely. <laughs> uh, so I'm not even going to get into what they all were. I'll just say the, the one that won. Yeah. Well, it's a toss-up, actually, for me, for once. <laughs> uh, the two things I thought were most impressive in terms of... I mean, if it's an individual stunt, it's the Halo jump. Yeah. Which was absolutely extraordinary. And for me, the other one, which is more of a sequence, but and it's fucking dangerous what he did, was that the rooftop run over Black Oh, Friday. my God, it's mental. Absolutely extraordinary. Jackie Chan level. Uh, absolutely brilliant. And, and I mean, good Jackie Chan. What level, were the other yeah. three just out of interest? Oh, I can't even remember. I just put <laughs> Feral Mission Impossible Fallout. Okay, so oh, the winner... Well, actually, no, tell, no, tell, 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 tell like, the other one certainly would have been him when he's hanging off the helicopter. Yeah. Like at the bottom of That's just absolutely amazing. So, and so the winner goes to... Oh, we just said, didn't we? The Halo Jump, yeah? Yeah, the Halo Jump. Yeah, the sure. Halo Jump, yeah. I mean, fair. <clears throat> and the winner goes to Mission Impossible Fallout. <laughs> Hold, yeah, on, hold, on, hold on, I've got Tom Cruise is dialing in for this one. I can believe that's actually true, actually. No, no, sorry, we've we've lost the call again. Can I just say, let's stop doing that joke? <laughs> can, can I just say, when was that a joke? <laughs> uh, oh, 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 shit, he really thought it was happening. Guys, he's delusional again, we need to <laughs> yeah. just bring the so, shot. Uh, yes. That brings us to our next award, the standout action performer. Uh, oh yes, this was slightly eighteen. Okay, I had three, and there were different reasons, and they okay. may not all be expected. <clears throat> Obviously, Tom Cruise, who in many ways deserves to win for obvious reasons. Uh, I also would one of those obvious watch... reasons be that he's yeah. the highest paid actor in the world who insists on doing Jackie Chan bullshit, bullshit level stunts. I just mean, bullshit just, in yeah, the just, positive, just bit in the right way. Yeah. Well, 
yeah, basically. But there's more to talk about him. Um, I actually put Denzel Washington down for Equalizer 2, not because... Because obviously he doesn't do anything too crazy in it. But there's something about the way he executes action in general. He um, looks good. I, I, I always buy what he does, so, essentially. So I, You know that the, the Kamo thing about the hill you die on, right? Yeah, yeah. And I have a big hill that I die on, is the way people hold guns in action films. Mm-hmm. And this is one of my issues with Close, that Numi Rapace at no point looks comfortable yeah. holding a gun. She, it's, it's that fake kind of when they when they hold it too close to their face and you think well actually if you yeah, fire that's that gun Seagal, gonna, that's, the old, that's, that's the old Steven Seagal tree. yeah you're gonna you're literally gonna lose an eye um yeah. but I, I buy that I'll tell you the other person who won't be nominated for this but um if you watch the Punisher TV show yes um god I've forgotten the fucking guy's name the Punisher John Burnfield thank you completely forgot he handles a gun like a pro he's so yeah. good yeah i completely agree so and your third nomination for standout action performer of the year say again your Sorry. your third nomination for standout oh, action okay form. uh where's dwayne johnson the rock and specifically <laughs> for skyscraper <laughs> okay and hold on and the winner is i have actually said dwayne johnson even <laughs> Because because Skyscraper it had very mixed reviews. I really loved it in the IMAX. And it's 60% due to the way he is in those action scenes. Even though I know he's doubled, obviously, and all that stuff. There's something about him as an action performer. Because the Tom Cruise thing is so obvious and deserved as well. Yeah. But I genuinely feel Dwayne Johnson specifically in Skyscraper this year, particularly compared to Rampage, which was just... <laughs> Uh, they are kind of the same film, but they're literally um, the same film. They're very similar films, <laughs> but there's something about him in that film specifically. There's something to do with the fact that they've, they've given him the, you know, the disability with the leg and all that sort of stuff. I just, I don't know. There's something. It's weird that he's a tank, but he somehow seems vulnerable. Tom Cruise, it never seems in any in any jeopardy, even though he's doing genuinely life challenging, like life threatening stunts. I think there's just something about the way that Dwayne. Delivers in skyscraper, but for me, he's just done that action before the year. I I like it, and um, <clears throat> of course, Tom Cruise actually delayed the filming of Top Gun too, so he could learn to fly a jet. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. Well, he guys... a helicopter for real. I mean, like I say, he could just be the standout actual, but I feel like it's just a bit too obvious. Yeah. Uh, so uh, that brings us to our next award: uh, the uh, holy shit moment of the year. You don't get that at the Oscars, people. So, so okay. Uh, <clears throat> there's something weird that happened when I did this. I kind of came up with films rather than a moment, but if I have to pick a moment, an actual moment, it is Tom Cruise hanging off that helicopter for real. Because when he's on that the the, the, the cargo bit and climbing up to the helicopter, <coughs> that was the, in the whole movie, even though he's done all these incredible things, that was the moment that most reminded me of Jackie Chan at peak Jackie Chan. Yeah. Like doing a, a physically unbelievably dangerous in so for so many reasons stunt, and obviously he was presumably safety harnessed and all that shit. It doesn't matter. He's doing things that zero point one percent of humanity would even contemplate doing. And he's like doing bomb, it, and he's doing it, and doing it well, and doing it on a movie, and just probably despite you know. the insurers standing there shitting their pants. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. Of course. So. I, so I that's, take... that's the act. That's the actual moment. Um, I don't know why, because there's so many moments in that film. But for my nominations, it was more about films for me. Films that made me go holy. Films that made me go holy shit. Okay. If that makes sense. And there are five, and I'll just whistle through them. And they're all of a particular genre bent. Okay. There's no particular order. But Overlord, uh, Apostle. Mandy, Revenge, <laughs> and A Quiet Place. All of these films had moments in cinema, if you're in genre cinema, yeah. if you like, where I just went, <clears throat> holy shit, like all the way through. That's a lot of films in one. There's more, but those... But I, I mean, I've seen I've seen three out of those five. Yeah. Uh, and, I, and the other two I've got, got to watch. They've all got moments where I went, I mean, oh, oh my God. Revenge, the moment, the, the end moment where... yes. The blood and the and just like that is one of the most intensely fucking tight sequences ever. Yeah, yeah, um, absolutely. Which brings us to my favourite award, 
I mean, it has no link whatsoever to this, but, you know, the <laughs> Comeback of the Year Award. Now, it's funny because you only just told me to do that. <laughs> I, no, may have cut, I may have dropped that one at the last minute, yes. No, but what's interesting was, was that my Comeback of the Year, when I was putting Comeback of the Year, was 10 minutes before you <laughs> spoke to me, my Hall of Famer. But that's now changed because it's weird how it completely relates to the person I was putting in the Hall of Fame. Okay. It's Dolph Lundgren. Oh, okay, because, nice. Be, primarily because he's, a, you know, and in a good way, a DTV star, because overall his stuff is great. You, you, they're not all good, but he's overall generally great. But he's had two major films in the last 12 months in theatres that have both been massive, although I think Creed 2 isn't very good. Um, but it's still a massive comeback. And, of course, Aquaman, which was absolutely colossal. Yeah, I mean, biggest I DC like movie it, ever. It colossal so in terms of a comeback you don't get a lot bigger than that you really don't and do you know what he's had a comeback like over the past from expendables on expendables obviously helps yeah i remember interviewing him just before he was going off to film expendables and just just saying to us like i think i said to me like this feels like a bit of a a, a renaissance a renaissance a dolph nascent <laughs> and, and he was just like yeah you know it, I, I hope so and yeah, he, I just remember him being one of the nicest people I've ever spoken to. Yeah, he's very humble and down. I've, I've met him a couple of times. He's, I've been very briefly. He, he seems very modest and down to earth. Yeah, he overall. really is. And and you kind of go, considering everything that guy has been through and career-wise, sure, you know, pretty phenomenal, all in all. Um, yeah, it's amazing. <clears throat> good. I like it. That's a great comeback of the year. Can I just can I just add on to that? My, my special nomination of comeback of the year would be um, The Karate Kid. That's amazing. That's a very good call. Yes, excellent. Um, because excellent. look, That's completely great. everyone when they heard Cobra Kai, part everyone who grew up around that time went, ah, oh, ah, oh, oh, that's that's a nice idea, but it's going to be shit. But you, you know, remember I never liked you. Remember I, and I you never, never liked Karate Kid. Yeah. And I was like, do you know what? It's a nice idea, but it probably won't work, and it'll be a bit crap. But yeah. fuck it, you know, fuck it. Let's mm. give it a watch. And three episodes in, I was like, holy fucking shit, they nailed this. Absolutely, yeah, completely agree with you. Um, it's and, brilliant. And it got mainstream recognition for yeah. people going, "This is a genuinely brilliant show, whether you like the film or not." Yeah, no, I really love it. And it was produced it. by YouTube show. Red, which sounds like a porn channel. Yes, um, they really should do something about that. They really should. So, three films left, and I, uh, I always like. So, we've got our best film categories coming up next, followed by our Hall of Fame. I'm going to do this the other way around because I think actually sometimes the best DTV action films are are far more worthy of praise. So, in the Oscars, this would be the last one, to cut, second to last category. So, we're going to do yeah. first the best blockbuster. Okay. And the nominations uh, are yeah for a five. Uh, and bearing in mind these were all picked on the basis of being action yeah. centric. Uh, Sicario 2, uh, Dead of Thieves, uh, Deadpool 2. Sorry, I can't help the but first, laugh at Dead of Thieves. The, 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 the Dead of Thieves is great, though. It like, is Dead great. Is, no, that's why I'm laughing. Ger- Gerard Butler in, in, in really good action film Shocker. Like, Gerard Butler good. in Heat. I mean, well, try, <laughs> trying to be Heat, which was, yeah, which was one of its main downfalls, is trying to be Heat, which I felt. But I still loved it. Like, I really loved The more I think about Dead of Thieves, the more I actually genuinely really enjoyed it. Um, Deadpool 2, as I said. Uh, the First Purge. Which I know isn't strictly just action, but it's very action yeah. centric. And of course, Mission Impossible Fallout. Hold on. Do you really need to? Okay. And the winner is. Guess. Mission Impossible Fallout. Yeah, I mean, like it's just. It kind of had to be this year, ch- didn't it? Nothing else stands a chance. It it was an exceptional action film. Yeah. In a year. Of really good action films, but yes, Mission no, Impossible for that was phenomenal. I mean, I will say I had difficulty picking. I mean, that was the obvious winner. Yeah, there's a bunch of things. Um, so uh, I have Tom Cruise on the line. Oh, good. Oh, is it no, the Tom Cruise? No, Cruise sorry, 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 oh, sorry. Tom Cruise. Uh, Scientology have just called and they've taken him back. Oh, oh. That's but if we'd like to sign up for one of their courses, we might stand a chance to meet him. Oh, okay. Let's uh, meet together at Good Street because that's where their office is, unless it's moved. Uh, and, oh, there's one uh, in Middle Street in Brighton, mate. Oh, there is. I know. Let's just go and say that we're really confused and trying to figure out life and everything. Yeah. And uh, here's really, all my money. Um, we're really confused about you. our sexuality. Here's some money to help yes. sort it out. Yes, that'll work. <laughs> it always works. So, second to last, 
Uh, it's the best DTV director video. Uh, slightly, slightly. Did we do Hall of Fame? Hang on, we have done Hall of Fame. No, that's the last, the last one. We'll do that. Last. Oh, I see. Good. Um, okay. Director video is kind of kind of an old school terminology now because you don't really get. Yeah, much. but home entertainment title. Yeah, better, so. but you know, I love DTV. It's it's awesome. So the nominations for best T- DTV action film are. Okay, so weirdly, I'm going to drop out Strangers Pray at Night because I'm going to keep it more action. But I love Strangers Pray at Night. That's good. Uh, Going to replace it with uh, The Night Comes for Us because it's ex- extraordinary. Uh, so, the nominations for Best Home Entertainment or DTV uh, The Night Comes for Us. Yep. Final Score. Uh, 24 Hours to Live. Accident Man. And Braven. Braven? Mm, the Jason Momoa film, Braven. Ah, okay. Oh, I think I saw that. It's absolutely brilliant. Well, I hope you know because it's absolutely brilliant. I'm sure I saw that. I, sometimes everything just my old age. It's, it's him and Stephen Lang uh, in the for, in like a forest. Yes, I have seen that. Road. It's fucking great. Yeah, absolutely it is different. fucking great. Yeah, because yeah. that's that's why that's why it won. Because I'm not letting you open up a fucking envelope. <laughs> it, it, <laughs> it, 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 I, I will say, accident, accident man comes very close. Uh, and final score in the end does come very close as well. Yeah, there can only uh, be one winner. All, all the ones I said were great. But, uh, oh, hold on, hold on, Ross, you opened up the wrong envelope. Oh. It actually is Moonlight. Oh, dear, you're doing that. <laughs> sure, that's the best. Uh, let's, let's, let's stick in all the cliches, shall we? Um, hold on, hold on, yeah. I have... Jason Momoa. Actually, you probably have got Jason Momoa. No, 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 no. I've got, um, I've got Simon Phillips on the line. He'd like to ask why we haven't done a best action TV oh. show. Oh, do we have to keep mentioning his name? So leaves us down to one. Is he paying you? Is he paying? You? Absolutely, yeah. Literally. Even a negative. Comment come, come on, like he'd pay anyone. That's a good point. Yeah. That's a good point. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, we walked straight into that joke. Uh, that one wrote itself. Um, and finally. Uh, the Hall of Fame award. Now, this can be a stunt performer. It can be a stunt legend. It can be absolutely anyone. Uh, both Ross and I will do a Hall of Famer. Um, okay. Well, my it's just I can't like I can't not do it. It's Tom Cruise because he's going to keep doing this shit. One, so I'll give you that. Well, Tom Cruise, but it's because he's going to keep doing this shit till it kills him. <laughs> I'm convinced the reason they're doing the next two Mission Impossibles back to back. Is they're going to kill him off? And the last one literally are going to blow him up, and yeah, he'll be like, "I'll do this stunt," and he'll be like, "No, Tom, yeah. you don't have to. No, no, I'm doing this stunt." No, this is for him. This is for him. it's to send him to Zenu or whatever. Whatever, <laughs> um, whatever, it's fine. It, like he's going, he's going to go into space. They're bound to do something in space. He'll fall from <laughs> oh, space God. like that guy. The other guy fell from space. Do I, fu- do you know what? I fucking in, love it. Glass, they did... Into a glass of water. He'll but I'd love if they did a Moonraker and did um and and did like. Like Mission Impossible in space with lasers and every and they just went for the listen, last one they just went batshit fucking Moonbreaker. Listen, we're about a fortnight away from Donald Trump contacting Tom Cruise and saying, "Listen, I need you to do something for me," <laughs> and Tom Cruise will just go and do it, and they'll film it like a documentary. I need you to go to the Kremlin and suck uh, Putin's dick oh. uh, to thank him, uh, but you've got to drop out of the sky like a hand grenade and do it. He'll, he'll just do it. This this sounds like the best thing ever. <laughs> Uh, no, do you look, know what I found? Did you know really just because we were on action? Do you know it's really depressing fact? Do you know what Donald Trump's favourite film is? Go on. Bloodsport. <laughs> Which uh, just it's upsetting because I mean that I ruins Bloodsport. that film completely. It doesn't it doesn't exactly ruin it, but it kind of taints it. It does, yeah, it does. Um, <sighs> so uh, my entry for the Hall of Fame this year uh, is someone that I interviewed a few years ago and who died sadly um, beginning of last year and whose death literally went unnoted but his contribution to stunts and pioneering stunt work and bringing in um wire work and high falls and that kind of stuff from from Mm. hong kong basically shaped the industry in the uk uh this was a guy who was steve mcqueen's stunt double um and literally genuinely pioneered a lot of what we have now uh, he's a guy called Lauren James. Yeah. And yeah, he Never sadly passed away last year uh, from dementia. And he'd been, he's someone, I did a huge art interview with him in 2012, I think, um, back for Impact Magazine, RIP. Um, yeah, back in the day. Back in the day. And it was, it was just amazing just talking to this guy who who had literally done everything. 
Yeah. And, you know, he, he really, really was a pioneer. And if you look at some of the people that don't get notified, uh, or sorry, get <laughs> sorry. put up when someone dies within the Academy yeah. Awards, and the people that don't, yeah. and you kind of go, you know, it's a bit shitty. Uh, sorry, stand corrected. He actually died in 2017. Oh, okay. Um, but it was a bit shitty that, like, literally, he, no one kind of mentioned it. And, yeah, that's sad. And, you know, it was sad. And he was a genuinely great guy. He did The Abyss. He did Master of the Universe. He was in uh, Escape from New York. He worked on Back to the Future. Um, he worked on pretty much, you name it, he worked on it. He even did stunts on Weekend and Bernie's. I mean, you know. Awesome. Raw Deal, Short Circuit, um, MacGyver, Rambo, Beverly Hills Cop. You know, going right the way back. He did Butch and Sundance, The Early Days. He's a stunt coordinator on that. He did... Um, King Kong in '76. Um, you know, I'm, I I know I'm listening, but he did. He was a stunt double for the Getaway in um, for Steve McQueen, Poseidon Adventure. He worked on Bullet again, stunt double for Steve McQueen. Um, Thomas wow. Crown Affair, stunt double for Steve for Steve McQueen. You know, this guy was an absolute legend, and his credits go back to 1955. Uh, and yeah, yeah, he passed crazy. away and, and literally like, his last film he did was the 2002 Stuntman film, uh, Spider-Man film, sorry. Right. Um, he also did Wild Wild West. Uh, oh, well. Um, but we're not all perfect. <laughs> we're not all perfect. But, you know, he worked with everyone. Uh, and linking back to our, our Dolph Lundgren conversation, he even worked with Dolph on Master of the Universe. So right, he is my go. first entry into the uh, Ross and Phil Hall of Fame. Cool, that's perfect. Yeah. It's very, very well deserved. Yeah, I think so. I think so. So, look, that was the first ever Boy Ask Awards. And we will do these as long as the podcast go every year. And they'll come out the uh, the so, night so, of the Academy so Awards. That was the final. <laughs> that was the final <laughs> action awards. <laughs> we just every, every year, this is the final one. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is the last uh, one. Yeah. So, look, until, uh, until, until the Academy uh, Awards start doing it themselves. Yes. So don't rush, yes. basically. So never then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So never. Um, why, Ross, look, before we, we, we'll finish off, but why do you think they don't, why, why do you think they've got such, and I spoke to, uh, not to fucking name drop, but um, I spoke to, um, oh, fucking hell, I'm so bad with names. Um, the guy I interviewed that, that did, like, the fucking fight in They Live. Should we read Jeff Hibardo? Jeff Amada, thank you, Ross. <coughs> thank you. Uh, I, I asked Jeff Amada that question, and and he just he just said he they just don't they don't understand why. Right. And so, why do you think it is? Why do you think they of of that they just refuse to acknowledge that craft? Because they're cunts. And right, that's there, there the perfect a, answer. There isn't. There isn't. There's no reason that's good enough because. If they're awarding anything that isn't human participation, and what I mean by that is obviously people do the VFX, but if they're if they're giving awards for best the way the, way the film looks or the cinematography, whatever, like just the stuff, the technical stuff, but they're not awarding like people who and they're, and they're awarding actors and they're awarding yeah just other participants. There's no such thing. I'm like you could probably correct me if I'm wrong. I imagine that there isn't a single film in the best film nominations each year that doesn't benefit from stunts. I just, Ooh. I just don't. I'm pretty sure that's, that's true. interesting. Who, who, what films are nominated this year? For the life of me, I don't know. Best. <laughs> well, like, like, like non- Green Book. There's fight. There's fight scenes in Green Book, for example. So, uh, best picture nominees. Oh, Black, sh- Black Panther. Black Panther is a bunch of action. No, I mean, there's nothing in Black Panther. <sighs> so, Bohemian Rhapsody. Pretty much. Yeah, there's definitely stuff yep. in Bohemian the Rhapsody. The favourite, I've not seen, I couldn't comment. I haven't uh, seen it, but all that lesbianism was probably quite dangerous. Yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> Black Panther. <laughs> Black Klansman. Green Book. Definitely. Vice. Definitely in Black Klansman. Definitely starts a in Star Vice. is Born. Unquestionably, even things like falling down from the stairs. Yeah, potentially people, not people Roma. Like I'm guessing. I don't know. Potentially I Roma. No, maybe if people cross a road, by the way, that's a stunt. Yeah, I know. I know. It's, people don't understand what stunts are at all. They don't have to be fight scenes. It can be a scene where someone falls over a table or whatever. Whatever. 
And, and you will have a stunt coordinator or to advise on that film. In case I've seen it, a climbing a mountain or whatever the hell they do. Horseback riding in films. There you go, it's probably horseback stuff in favourite. Now, I'm not saying that the stunts, therefore, need to be nominated for that film. I'm willing to bet you there isn't a single film in best nom- in, in nominated best films that hasn't somehow benefited, benefited from stunts. Yeah, and do you know what? I think it's like nowadays, there's probably not a film in, in there that doesn't benefit from... Um, CGI or computer effects. Absolutely, and therefore it's fine to... There's nothing wrong with nominating for best VFX, but if you're nominating for best VFX, which includes things like people being thrown through the air or exploding or set on fire or whatever you want to call it, but it does involve people too, like muzzle flashes, whatever you want to, whatever you want to nominate visual effects for, there is a physical component, and that physical component is probably a stunt. I don't and necessarily for the record, VFX, Roma but... had visual effects and stunts. Okay, there you go. So the most unlikely. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I just don't understand it. So uh, that's the end of the boyass. We're going to go and celebrate Actually, sorry, the after party. Before, hang on, hang on, hang on. You said you don't understand it. There's only one reason. They're cunts. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> like, it's, that's, the only, that's the only reason that they, can, that they have decided, they have gone. We're not going to acknowledge that. And that's the act of, that's the act of a, a Donald Trump type person or whatever. I, and, I that's happened, and that's happened for decades. And de- think about how many years, it's decades. Yeah, and I can't, I can't disagree. I think you're completely right. Um, so we are going to go and celebrate in our in our uh, after party uh, out in John's house. Oh, good. He's still on then. Yeah, he's still on. Does he know? Does he know we're turning up? Not yet. Could be a bit awkward, <sighs> but we'll see how it goes. Uh, we we were going to go to Michael Barrymore's, but apparently the pool's still out of action. Oh, huh. huh. He's... <laughs> Have they still got a body? I mean, that that's nothing like a current joke, is there? Fucking hell. Um, oh. And that got about as many laughs as Joanna Lumley's opening monologue. So, Ross, where some people just, find just, out just having, just, just, having, just having a drink. Hang on. <laughs> you feeling a bit wheezy? Um, <clears throat> where can people delirious. find out about you, Ross? Okay. Uh, on all the social things, I'm at, at Ross Boyask. Uh, he is. If you want to follow Evolutionary Films, the company, which uh, I do... You do things like do film. We do, do film things. things. We, do, do, we things. do films. Uh, do it's films. actually our motto. Our motto is we do films. We do things. <laughs> we, well, no, we do films. We do, we do films. Uh, it's at Evo Films UK uh, on all the socials. Uh, and then if you want to follow the action film franchise, oh, uh, Vengeance Two will be picture locking this week. All being well. Oh, no. Nice. Let's see if that's let's see if that's true. But <laughs> we should be. Uh, and then that's at Vengeance Film UK on all the socials. Cool. And find out more about us at www.philsquickreview.co.uk. Or you can check out Twitter, which is Phil Quick Review, at Phil Quick Review, that is. And you can check us out on Instagram as well. It's Ross and Phil Talk Movies. We're on Facebooks. Uh, we've probably got a Bebo page. And I'm still listed on Friends Reunited. What about MySpace? Uh, Tom banned me. Oh, did he? What yeah. a prick. And he's a cunt. <laughs> Uh, yeah. And that's it for the annual boy. <laughs> that was that was. Can I just say that was definitely an unwarranted one yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of all the ones. There's a couple I've said that I probably shouldn't have said, but uh, but it's the only word I can use. Can yeah. Use Look, let's be honest, Tom from MySpace, he'll be fine. Yeah. We looked him up yesterday. He he's still worth sixty million. Oh, is he? Yeah, yeah. He sold MySpace for a lot of money. Oh. What have yeah. I done with it? What MySpace? It's still a yeah. thing, but it's Seriously. not. I, I, Is it still real? It's still there. I'm hurriedly. Wait, wait, wait. Don't go in there. Don't go in there. <laughs> Fucking hang on. Wait, wait. The I boy wanna, asks wait, have wait, gone wait, slightly wait. off track. No, 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 no. This is really important. MySpace. I mean, I don't know if our MySpace uh, page is still there, but MySpace is still there. Holy shit. MySpace is still here. And are you? have you got a picture of the mountain from Game of Thrones? Reads poem shirtless for Valentine's I Day. I do. I mean, oh, so does, does that mean we're still here on here? I don't know. If I, I, t- if I type my name, hang on. I had no idea this was still. I I don't even remember a time when I was on, but I know I was. Yeah, no, I'm uh, 10 Wait. dead. Hold on. Wow. I'm here. I'm here. 10 dead men. And There's a video. Still here. I don't even know what that photo's of. Hold on. I'm, I'm collecting up. To view this profile. No, I don't want to fucking on... sign up. It's MySpace. I'm, st- I'm still on MySpace. <laughs> it's got Left 4 Dead stuff on it. Yeah, there's Tender Men stuff still on there as well. Wow. See, even our films live on that platform that no one That's uses. crazy. 
We'll be back. Just get back. <laughs> imagine, wait, wait, no, no, just before you go, just before you go. Imagine if, like, we all just got into MySpace again. Like, if we just leave <laughs> Facebook and go, yeah, yeah, MySpace is all right. Let's make MySpace a thing. <laughs> wasn't it a thing already? Yeah, it was, but it, then it wasn't. So let's make it a thing again. I'm uh, we'll be, my connections. <laughs> we'll be Sorry, back wow. in a couple of weeks. I'm connected with Lisa Scott Lee on MySpace. <laughs> oh, dear. I am. I'm connected with Lisa Scott Lee. I don't know what the last time Lisa Scott Lee actually went on to MySpace, but... Because she's there all the time. I, I looked at you. I didn't even look at me, to be fair. <laughs> That's crazy. Uh... I'm still friends with Chico on MySpace. What's happening? <laughs> I'll tell you what's happening. We are going back. No, I'm no longer on there. He really has... Oh, no, hold on. No, I really have been banned from MySpace. You've been banned from MySpace. I mean, I was just wow. joking, but I'm genuinely not on them anymore. That's sad. I'm completely gobsmacked. Well, Sorry, I'm now I'm thinking... So that, I'm, we are going to wrap this yeah, podcast okay. up. It's been nice to talk to you all. Uh, we'll be back in a couple of weeks. Thanks. Bye. Bye, 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 bye. Uh... I'm connected with the rest of the... St- I'm connected with Fate Tozer on MySpace. Basically, you're a step. Sport.